Hello, everyone, and welcome to Exploring Cinema. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And I'm Adam. Today, we are wrapping up February with Love and Basketball. Yes. Another movie from the year 2000 to, as Dylan put it, one of our other episodes, lead us right into March Madness. Mm-hmm. Out of Valentine's Day into March Madness. Exactly. It's perfect. A perfect bridge. I, I didn't check the exact release date of this movie, but I hope it was end of February, beginning of March. <laughs> Yeah, like February. I mean, yeah, like February 12th or something would be like perfect. And then you get like a good month run in the theater. Mm -hmm. And then boom, mm. <laughs> Big Ten tournament time. It yep. was released. It was released April 21st in the US. Oh, OK, so after, after mm -hmm. capitalizing on the. Yeah, OK, bold move, bold move. <laughs> Producer Spike Lee. I noticed that. That was kind mm. of fun. Uh, Adam, what is love and basketball all about? Yes, strap in. This one's a little bit longer because the IMDb one sucked. Uh, Love and Basketball from 2000. Uh, Quincy McCall and Monica Wright grew up in their same neighborhood and have known each other since childhood. As they grow into adulthood, they fall in love, but they also share another all-consuming passion, basketball. As Quincy and Monica struggle to make their relationship work, they follow separate career paths through high school and college, and they hope, in, in, and they hope into stardom in the big league professional ball. The IMDb one is very short and it makes a little pun and it's just like they play love and basketball. And oh, I was yeah. like, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So <laughs> I would have enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I didn't. So I was hoping Nate's, the listeners Nate's always down like, for some puns. <laughs> yeah. Always. There's always room, always time. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Dylan, All right. you had seen this before, I believe. And Adam and I had not. Yeah. I watched it for our uh, sports movie draft. That we did a little bit ago uh, with our yeah. good friend Jay, uh, and I did select this movie. So, and I had an advantage because none of you had seen it. So, mm -hmm. I was able to get it. Great value pick <laughs> in the later rounds. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for the recommendation. It fit mm -hmm. really well into this month. I think so. Uh, before we dive any further in, at a glance, Love and Basketball, Year Two Thousand, directed by Gina Prince. Bythewood, I'm guessing on the pronunciation there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this was her directorial debut, which is kind of cool. That is cool. She more recently has directed uh, The Old Guard, an action movie starring Charlize Theron on Netflix, and The Woman King, mm -hmm. oh. which Charlize Theron is not in. Nope. Interesting. Viola Davis and several other, I think Natasha Lynch, mm. maybe her name, or something like that. Yeah, that's. I believe that's right. I'm checking real fast. I need to. Someone needs to check because I feel like I just screwed that up. Lashana Lynch. Lashana Lynch. Mm. Uh, Tucson Mabedu. Yep. John Boyega. John Boye is yeah. Yep. Yeah. We good we reviewed that I believe on our other on our other channel. Yeah. So she's still making movies. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, budget. It's kind of weird. Everywhere it's fifteen to twenty million dollars. I don't understand quite why it's so hard to find an exact. A there's a big swing. Figure. There's a big swing For, there of like five mil. <laughs> yeah, which it's not like a huge budget. It's a medium budget movie, so that's a sizable portion. Gap. <laughs> right. Maybe with an extra five million dollars, they could have. I don't know. Made it look like the women's college team played basketball, where women's college teams play basketball. Oh, here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just so you know, this is what you're in for. Have you ever uh, watched a movie and gotten caught up on an old, basically insignificant detail? Well, this is the podcast for you. <laughs> have you ever watched an action movie and thought, that gun doesn't hold that many bullets? Yeah, that have to reload. gun certainly Why? doesn't. That takes me out of the movie completely. Yeah. If you're Nate, you go, that's not what a basketball stadium looks like. That's way no. too small. That's not. No, it's, it's, funny. A, it's, a, Nate, it's a college Nate's version team. is. Nate's version is no, the, the facility for this women's sporting event is not big enough. <laughs> it's not appropriate. Yeah. It's not the right it size. It was like the size of a middle school gym. Yeah, well, but some things are for dramatic effects. To emphasize as far as I'm we'll, aware, we'll all basketball courts later. are the same size. It's just the, the surrounding area, the floor seats and stuff that, that get expanded. Yeah, the, ble the, bleachers not... weren't fully, the bleachers weren't fully out. I don't know if your high school had them, but ours retracted to the wall. Maybe mm -hmm. that was it. Maybe that's what they were doing. <laughs> it made 27.7 million dollars <laughs> okay nice oh i love this uh 85 pretty well reviewed movie across the board 85 percent on rotten tomatoes 7.2 on indb and a 3.7 on letterboxd and it won the independent spirit award for best first screenplay 
oh my gosh that's really high accolades for such a glaring mistake right in the middle of the movie <laughs> with the size of the arena uh, that's incredible it was able that's to not part of the that. screenplay though unless she specifically wrote in there like there are only <laughs> 78 people at this US <laughs> basketball game yes gender inequality themes reinforced <laughs> This okay, I would not. I might have brought it up, but it wouldn't have bothered me as much if they weren't also just filming the men's basketball scenes in a large arena. It's not like they didn't have access and film part of the movie in a large arena. Yeah, for sure, but it wouldn't have had the same effect because it's all like his his opportunities and his path. Like you know, they're both really good, but look at what he gets be, just because he's a dude. And meanwhile, she like. I, I think it was meant to emphasize a point. I don't think they just I'm like, sure it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> there could have just been nobody there. there I don't know. Been. It just like it, it it held less people than our high school gym. I mean, yeah, we, we was a we Pac-12 <laughs> team that Dick Vitale talks about in the movie. Yeah, that's true. Um I back to what you were saying, I believe uh, our director Gina Prince Bly- Blythewood uh, also did write this movie. So a, a a award for the best first screenplay. That's pretty that's pretty impressive for her this to be Absolutely. her director they build yeah, premiere and writing debut. That yeah, seriously, that is that is uh that is impressive. Yeah. So before we continue, uh like and subscribe if you want to hear me continue to complain about the size of basketball arenas in movies. <laughs> This is where you can Carter find next. that valued content. This is what we're about. Uh, yes. Also, to get reminded, whenever we do one of these deep dives, we try to do about one a week. And speaking of that, our next movie going to be a little bit of change of pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to do kind of themed months. Or is what we're going to be trying to do going forward. So mm-hmm. kind of romance or romance centered movies for February uh, mm-hmm. month of January. We just talked. To, we just watched movies with. Uh, led by child performances yes yes that, that were good. not kids movies <laughs> mostly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and so next month uh we'll get into that with an episode we'll talk about the theme we'll preview all of those movies but next week the movie that we will be watching and discussing is fargo the oh. Coen brothers black comedy masterpiece from 1996 adam's never seen it we are very excited to watch this movie with adam mm-hmm. this shit all over it <laughs> I can't wait. Good luck. Just talk through the entire thing. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Take your best shots. Yeah. Oh, I will, don't you know? Um, <laughs> you so yeah, you, I'm excited to watch Fargo. I know you guys have seen it, but really excited yeah. to actually get to it. So it's a fun rewatch. Yeah, absolutely. So opening statements. Uh Dylan, this this is this feels like your movie, so yeah, uh, yeah. So I just yeah. have uh, uh, Love and Basketball is a movie that is all about uh, balance and pace, and I think I was it's really impressive. hoping you were going to say Love and Basketball. <laughs> we're not <laughs> IMDb. Um, I like how it manages to be a romance and a sports film, but also it's able to incorporate other kind of side themes and narratives about like gender norms, expectations, also the parental stuff. They both have great they both get a really great scene with you know the son with his dad and the mom and the daughter with his mom with her mom so i felt like it, it kind of sneaks up on you with kind of the unspoken themes that are more shown than told um mm-hmm. and so yeah. I, I really appreciated that on the second on the second watch here for me nice adam what do you got i had two i had one i originally wrote during the first maybe like 30 minutes of the movie. And, and for context, it. both of you just watched this like an hour ago, right? Like today. Yeah. Okay. Not on so it's very not- fresh. Yeah. It's okay. very fresh. Um, so the first one was dumb, but it just, uh, they're both dumb. Uh, <laughs> when puppy right. love grows up. Oh yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is ball is life. Life is ball. Oh yeah. Definitely ball is life. Puppy love was the answer to one of my uh, recent jeopardy calendar questions. Oh, Oh. oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, let, me go, let me go write that down real quick. Yeah. Um, Big news. <laughs> no, I like that. Yeah. The um, Definitely Ball is Life, a movie that epitomizes that. They are both unabashedly all about basketball. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think the movie commits to it enough where it's like, you know, you can't knock it. There are people like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, for Quincy's character, if you're going to make the NBA, you better be all about basketball. Like, oh, for or, sure. And I know. mean, the son of an NBA player and, you know, 
even just people who don't play it necessarily just fanatics you know i think it yeah. would be a good job of just showing that they're just those type of people they just yeah. love basketball nothing will nothing will get in their way they don't they're not concerning themselves with a lot of other things but. Mm -hmm. all right over to you nate on to me i'm struggling with how i feel about this movie in within like an hour after finishing it i didn't like hate it or anything that's not the range that i'm in yeah but um i think just kind of my first immediate thoughts after recently finishing the movie are that it was refreshing to see uh i mean i'll call this mostly it's it's kind of a it's a co-star thing but i feel like the biggest through line is kind of the um the female athletes side i think so too i, I give think that, that like sure. a little it tilts a little bit that way yeah it does and it was refreshing to see that story told in like in a caring and well thought out and honest way yeah and mm -hmm. I, that was the stronger part of the movie for me which mm -hmm. felt like fresher not just yeah. kind of like it was sort of hitting you know not mm -hmm. like every single movie about a male athlete hits all of those beats, but all of those beats have been hit in movies about male athletes. Yeah. Yeah. But Monica, the Monica character, I definitely yeah. felt like at this time I'd even noticed just how more kind of dynamic and kind of unique her story and her character is. Yeah. That's where I felt like I was watching something with a little bit more of an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then yeah. with, um, I keep just saying Q's character. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I say Omar Epps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quincy Q, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, nice. On to defining moments. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can just uh, keep going first if you guys Go want to do it that way. Yeah. Okay, for, for one, uh, the music just throughout. <laughs> so many That's jams. I, I mean, whether it, it's the throwback jams, newer ones, it's just the music throughout all the time was pretty fantastic. Um except for during the the there was a weird that they chose a kate bush song for the sex scene that was the one thing that <laughs> felt a little out of place i was like what um but no everything else was great um the spring dance scene i felt like just the the size and the scale of it felt more real and than and, and, and honest it didn't feel too big felt like okay yeah that's like a high school you know uh dance um and then obviously that just that whole night leading into like their first kind of romantic. I just thought that the spring dance was great. Um, the point of view basketball scenes, like when, yeah. when Monica is on the court, I had forgotten about that like and realized that I hadn't seen that in other basketball. Movies. That was really interesting. That was really cool. I kind of, I almost wish they would have done one more of those, maybe like from Q's point of view, like when he gets hurt in the NBA or something, you know, yeah. one more of those. Cause yeah, I was liking the point of view thing and like the inner monologue, like, come on, you got it. You got it. Go left. Like, go left. That was cool. Yep. That was cool. Yep. Um, the Monica practice scenes in college where she's kind of getting dogged by the coach. Yeah. Those were really well done. Um, and then both of the parental scenes, the scene with the dad in the hospital with Q and then the scene with her mom in the kitchen. Uh, yeah. I thought both of those scenes were fantastic, particularly the one of Monica and her mom, because yeah. it, it goes back and forth. It just keeps going back and forth between who's kind of, on the offensive and who's defensive and who's like, okay, are we agreeing on this? No, actually we're not agreeing on this because it like, I just love that conversation and just that whole scene that they just acted the hell out of that. And then the final one-on-one -on -one, great. Like it's a little cheesy, but like romantic movies often are, especially at the yeah. end. And I felt like it was well, it was done like honestly and like genuinely. And then just that, that last line double or nothing is just great. Yeah, yeah, the, the movie used the language of the movie to kind of give us our climactic scene in a unique way. Yeah, yeah. So those are those are mine's the my uh, defining moments. Yeah, I had the same stuff. I actually wrote down the soundtrack during the school dance, and then immediately underneath that wrote and during the sex scene because <laughs> so, <laughs> they're both like, oh, okay, this is what we're playing, <laughs> um, which is funny. So I had the dance in the aftermath, or their mm -hmm. their romantic entanglement. Mm -hmm. um i had the fight with the dad fight with the mom uh, the breakup scene which is i think mm. you always run into these kind of scenes in especially rom-coms where it's just like needlessly convoluted or someone just decided they didn't feel a certain way for mm -hmm. some reason and, and it gets explained a little bit more as you go on he's you know hey i felt lost you weren't there for me because i was going through something tough but at the time when it happens it's just a really dumb argument and he's just like, also, like i made my decision lasting, i'm doing whatever this has been lasting for like 36 hours like yeah what, what the yeah 
yeah, now's the breaking point. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought that that scene was was important. And then, yeah, the final game in the driveway, I thought was really good. So I'm disappointed in both of you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Neither of you included strip basketball <laughs> and what is possibly the greatest line of the century. We're, we're men with integrity. <laughs> <laughs> That is a pretty good scene, yeah. It is, it is. I didn't forget about that. What's one. the line, Nate? You have it. We all know. <laughs> I could not. I had to pause the movie. I was losing it. Yeah. Because he does not deliver that line with any sense of humor or awareness. No. No. Whatsoever. No. But if you have the opportunity to make a cheesy joke as you're about to, you know, you're going to get laid or something, like you make the joke. No. It, like it happens. It happens to right, people it was all the, right the time. Word choice. Funny. Yeah. But he says it in like a sexy way. It's right here. Like, yeah. Like, no, <laughs> like, dude. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, he, he said that I mean, was funny. Mm-hmm. Be funny. And she kind of laughs. Yeah. <laughs> she, she just, she's, she's like, that's ridiculous. She's like, yeah. all right, well. <laughs> but yeah, that was, no, that's a good scene too. This, yeah, the strip basketball scene. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, yeah, for a second, I thought that she was trying to recreate that in the last scene. But mm-hmm. I was like, oh, she's just taking the sweatshirt off because it's easier to play. I think it was kind of both, to be honest. Business. I think it was kind of both, to be a honest. A little bit. I think it was a little bit like, hey, remember, like, you know. This is what we used to do. Like, yeah. This, is, this, is, this goes all the way back. This is She's trying to convince him, like, hey, mm-hmm. like, I've loved you since we were 11. Mm-hmm. It's time to, like, tarps are off. It's time to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's the first thing I thought of when she did it. I was like, oh, she's going back to the game. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so. And also very strategic to challenge him to that game when he's still injured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's his own fault for being hurt so close to his own wedding. Yeah. Yeah. He, seriously. he didn't have a lot of time. Like there was never going to be a moment when he could like wait to get healthy. Yeah, that's yeah. why you don't hang on the rim, kids. Don't hang mm-hmm. on the rim. You'll, you'll come down and tear your ACL. Um, and <laughs> also, though, before I forget talking about it, I, d- I, I did realize uh, when I was going through this and making these notes that this is also a girl next door movie, like stare, like it is yeah. rope. It, you know, I feel like it. It's a, it's so many different types of movies, kind of all would in you one. Watch this as a double feature with the girl next door. Girl next door, <laughs> yeah, that would work. Good. Little two thousands girl next door. Uh, yeah, I like the story. It's like oh four somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Hmm. Um, so those were your defining moments, Nate. <laughs> you said the other ones. I just yeah. like you okay. guys didn't include. He's tacking on the good ones. Yeah. Just had to <laughs> add the strip basketball in there. That was going to be my quote at the end of the movie, but I'll find a different one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On to questions. Mm-hmm. So I've, I'd like to start with this one because as I've stated in some previous episodes, um, at what we were bringing bringing this movie up and when we we're going to talk about it uh at one point in time i was with a buddy in like fourth grade uh and we went to blockbuster and his dad let us pick up movies my buddy picked out this movie and yeah, we watched about yeah. 30 minutes of it before i was like what the fuck are we doing yeah it's not basketball um, we, yeah yeah so so my question to you guys is what would in your minds what would possess two fourth graders to choose love and basketball the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just the basketball part of it, uh, and just hoping that it's like 50% awesome basketball montages. And it's just about a super cool basketball player. Maybe it's just about somebody who loves basketball. See? Yeah. <laughs> I, I should text is. my friend and be like, what did, what were you thinking? Do you remember this? But, uh, but thanks Kyle. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> um, I did have a different question. Uh, and this one's kind of a, a, another dumb one. What kind of bank job do you think her dad had to afford a house in that neighborhood next to a, a, a NBA star? I was thinking about that after the movie was over, and it was either like, why is the NBA family living in a neighborhood that's not as nice as it could be? With their, or, with their house clearly is. Like, how, yeah. How yeah are where they did living? those two meet? Right. So later, <laughs> the, the brief scene where she is trying to be a bank teller and her dad comes over, so she clearly got the job because of her dad. On the back, there are like three plaques, and his is the middle plaque, and it's his face. So it's okay. insinuated that he's made it to a branch a president or whatever that may be. Yeah. He's high enough up, and I yeah. think I mean, also, he has to be. And I think it's also kind of a, another little statement on the whole economic insecurity of basketball versus a normal job. You know, I mean, his dad tries is emphasizing to him the whole time: go to college, get a degree, and then in the end, what do we see? His dad doesn't have an education. You know, we don't really know what he's doing. Meanwhile, Monica's dad is the president of his bank and completely financially 
you know, comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, just little things. That little, leads little into details. one of one of the questions I had actually was how many bad housing loans do you think that his bank gave out? It's <laughs> 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 like, right. I mean, it's a little early. Yeah. Yeah. But well, by the end of it, I suppose, because it starts like the movies in like the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. 2000. Yeah. By the time they hit the fourth quarter, they're like adults. They've gone through college. They're, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're young adults. They're early well, 20s. For five sure. year jump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have another one, Nate? My other one was, how old do you guys think Omar Epps was when this movie came out? Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Thirty? <laughs> I'm thinking they're both late twenties. He was born they... in, uh, yeah, he was born in seventy three, I believe. Damn, so really? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. And he was playing like a anywhere from like an eighteen. 18 to a 20 to like a then to like a 28 or a 30 year old yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i was pretty it was one because whenever you get movies that like start where the person's sort of in high school and then goes beyond like college even yeah they like i feel like people always get cast who fit the oldest version of who that character is like i think of margot robbie and i tanya mm -hmm. where for a while she's playing like 15 year old tanya harding yeah you're like yeah. No, not a chance and you're like <laughs> absolutely not yeah <laughs> But this did make me think of like a couple of the guys in like American Pie. Like it just felt like back when this movie was made, they were just like, if you're under 35, you can play a high schooler. Yeah, you'll be fine. That's also fine. all they did to age him was just give him like more of a goatee mustache like combination. Because like, yep. he oh, even yeah. says towards the end when they're like adults and he's about to get married, he's you know in the NBA. She's like, oh, your peach fuzz finally grew in. And it's like, yeah, he had a little bit earlier when he was in college, but like before that he was clean. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, that's all we did. We just gave him facial hair. <laughs> like, yeah. What I feel like I didn't trick. notice it as much with Sine Lathan. She she was I felt like I don't know, but she's also just a beautiful act actress. Yeah. And like yeah, so in high school her I was like oh okay yeah, but it was is funny how she goes with that with that guy from college, the college guy. Oh, he looks yeah, older than he, he was, was like thirty three. <laughs> he was like thirty three year old. He's also like six five, so it was like oh, yeah, that guy was. <laughs> like if that guy showed up, at a, I would be so intimidated. If that like, guy no. showed up at a high school dance, I yeah. know. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, that was that was good. She's um, older, actually. She was born in seventy one, so she was twenty eight wow. or twenty nine when this came out. Wow, good, good for her. Good Talk for her being born in nineteen seventy one. Yeah, for being twenty nine and believably <laughs> portraying a high school senior, I think that's good for her. She's pretty good. I, I thought, and she, I just felt like again, we already said that her character, she kind of has more to offer and had to bring more than omar epps did i feel like yeah, sure like sure. Mm -hmm. um and she really uh succeeds in that yeah i i actually did not really have uh any questions uh for the group honestly um okay. yeah i felt like uh more things i thought about i was like yeah i think uh yeah couldn't think of any um right. so, observations yeah. and musings okay um, i have three what do you guys uh, have? Uh, yeah, one uh, for me is just that the the WNBA doesn't exist for most of this movie. Mm -hmm. A little uh, reminder of just how recent that whole development is. Like all the yeah. women are like, so what are you going to do after college? You're going to go play overseas because <laughs> that's the only option. Like that was uh, that was interesting. And then just overall, like the symmetry of everything between, you know, him and her. And it's like it seems like they each get almost an equal amount of screen time and even though monica's more dynamic it just the whole thing feels almost like a basketball game it's paced out like you know the four quarters and it's like a one-on-one -on -one. it's like all right he's got the ball it's we're seeing him okay now we're back to her now they're together again then it's her then it's him then they're together again it's just so balanced it never it never really falls into just being about one of them yeah. um which i thought was really cool and then to your point um <clears throat> adam i felt like the big fight that they have i agree that it is kind of an example of just like you know if you just had an honest talk about it you could probably get through it but watching it this time i did notice that that moment of in time is kind of similar to like star a star is born where she is kind of surpassing him like he's still going to go to the nba but he is like he's messing up in college he's going to rush to the nba he's going to be kind of an underwhelming prospect and then he's going to get hurt meanwhile she at that point has just earned the starting spot and she's going to go on to be a star and she's going to go overseas and be a star and she's going to you know like play in the nba so in a way i mean it's not exactly the same but like i felt like that was part of it too was it was 
he could kind of see or feel like, oh, wait, like for the first time, like basketball is going better for her than it is for me. And that's, yeah. I am having a lot of trouble dealing with that. Yeah. Which is um, funny because I feel like at that time, because that's how I felt about that, that, uh, scene as well but at that time mm -hmm. like he's still like he just came off like a huge win like the only problem he has right now is like learning about his dad like that's the only thing he's and, concerned yeah about. the yeah yeah his dad well, i think for him it was like he was following this path that his dad laid out yeah and it sort and of now, shattered all of it he's questioning everything so yeah it yeah. shatters his, his entire life basically mm -hmm. um it's just yeah it's interesting that she's like we'll work on it and he's like no it's like yeah and then he so the only goes person into, that's been here the entire time, you're just going to bail on like, yeah. And then he just kind of goes into, you know, douchebag college jock mode, yeah. which, you that's know, it's, it's stereotypical, it's typical, but it is a mode. And it, it, is, and it, and it has a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Those people exist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, those were my observations and musings. Okay. So I guess, I mean, one of them that I had, we already talked about at the top, so we don't need to get back into the, into the whole, mm -hmm size of the arena thing um mm -hmm. first one uh the four quarters are not the same length in the movie <laughs> huge oh. huge flaw obviously oh how, how off are they? <laughs> uh, the last well, one's like the last 40 minutes of the movie well and the third quarter lasts forever it's the first the first well, you know what like the first quarter is not very long you know what a lot of basketball fans will tell you that's how real games are too first, yeah first they must have been factoring in like the clock the stoppages and the fouls in, in the <laughs> yeah, in the last five minutes the fourth quarter of an nba game does last long. it's like 30 minutes itself so there you go i like i like that as an answer <laughs> yeah a nice attention um, to detail <laughs> yeah. yeah spike and uh, my, uh gina um i didn't feel like we need this is a very tiny thing mm-hmm but it felt like there were a few too many like championship games going on in this movie. Like it could have just been a game. Like it did a lot of times it didn't feel to me like it. I don't know. It just kind of felt like, okay, we got the championship game of high school and their own gym again with like 80 people there. It just like, just that's part of what made me think about that though. Like if we just called it another game. Yeah. Then I would. Well, it has to be the end of the that. season because it's her last chance. I know, but it doesn't have to be the food. championship game. If the team wasn't that good, or like if they didn't, I don't know. Like, but then there's another championship game in Europe, where like that one again mm -hmm. could have just been mm -hmm. like a game. Yeah, but I did yeah. like the callback to her being like, "I have the the trophy on the table next to her." And they and, did a very the, good job with that. That was a the, really funny bit. Yeah, she yeah. was like, "Do you mind oh. taking it off? Like, go fuck yeah. yourself." <laughs> like that was pretty great. And mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't take the bait with any March Madness or like championship no, they didn't college. There was never a USC's final four. I mean, they totally we just see him mess up at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like insinuated, like, yep, and that was their season. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I don't know. But I see I yeah, I see what you're saying. And then I'm curious. I was curious at the beginning too, like what did she hit her face on on the ground that gave her a scar? Like he pushed her into the grass. I would assume, I would assume, uh, like her hand as she tries to brace herself, like hit her something and like scratched it. Maybe because there's nothing. Know. They don't show anything on the ground. Because like yeah. I remember playing basketball as a kid and like like jamming a finger and then my like fingernail started to bleed because I mm -hmm. smoked my nail on it. I'm not and so I, much. That's the only it was thing more I could, just like, that, like they cut to later when they're older and then they were like very deliberate well, and showing us that she has a scar on her face which i will be able like to answer this in a second much so. for what happened which, yeah oh is there a tidbit coming that explains that did she really tidbit. get a scar in real life Ooh. and then um i the last one uh i really liked at the end kind of the way she sort of described i don't think they were in these exact words but like when he's asking her why don't you want to play basketball anymore? And it's kind of clear mm -hmm. that she wants to say like, because it was our thing. Yeah. And like, without like us kind of pursuing it together, it's just not as, I, I thought that was really, really well done. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed that. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. That was nice. Um, All right. I don't really have any observations of musings. The only thing I did like pick out that was hilarious to me was uh, during the scene, I think it's there in high school. And one of the girls is like, Oh, he's so cute. Look at his ass. And then it's like, shot of just basketball shorts it's like you can't even tell that he's got like a nice butt or anything like he's barely sweating and it's just like 
what an unflattering shot to be like, look at how hot this guy is. Nothing. Like it's just, it's there just was flat another... basketball shorts. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what was that? What was the point of that? God, there was another cut. Adam's not buying it. There I was, was another very, absolutely like, incredible like... cut that was, it was like, it was, it was at the very beginning of a game and it was like the tip off and the camera showed the tip off from the top. And then, yeah. right and then it went to the scoreboard board. and then it went to, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> the yeah. right the scoreboard with like, 45 seconds left or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't need that. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, tidbits, Adam? Yeah, tidbits. hit us with some tidbits. There's not many. Um, but I will start with the 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 question that we were just talking about. The scene where uh, Monica is pushed and receives a scar was added because Sine Lathan has a scar on her cheek in real life. Okay. Just hit so something harder. Just... That's all I wanted. Like, yeah. getting the grass is not going to... She could have yeah. hit like the pole for the hoop, or maybe like the kids' bikes or something. He, and he shoved her really hard oh, through the hedges that were like be between them and the the grass back there. I don't know. Um, I'm saying you shove the child actor into a brick wall. <laughs> Let's get real here. Gets, I mean, for a child actor, she gets she gets shoved down in the game, and then also when they she argue, she gets shoved down. Then she shoves him, and then there it's like that was a physical performance. Yeah. By, <laughs> it's true by, yeah. by that young actress. Um, so, uh, the, the Spike Lee and the director, um, said they saw over 700 people for the part of, uh, Monica. Wow. Um, they saw actors, players, and people who have never acted before, as I feel like you probably also do in, in some movies, especially when it they comes that to, was a miracle. yep, they took, they took hockey players who weren't actors and taught them how to act because it was easier to teach people how to skate than it was, or it was easier to teach people how to act, act yeah. than it was skate convincingly at least. Um, so it said it was down to Sine Nath Lathan. Sorry, I keep messing her name up. And Nisha Butler, who is a star player at Georgia Tech and the 1999 Atlantic Coast Conference Rookie of the Year. Wow, uh, which is kind of interesting. That's pretty fun. Um, yeah. And then there's like I put Sine with a basketball coach for two months, and I put uh, Nisha with an acting coach, and then Sine got the part. Um, wow. Yeah. And Sine also said uh, in an L interview with the LA Times later on that her basketball tryout was terrible because she'd never played it before. So she didn't know how to dribble, didn't know how to hold the ball, couldn't shoot. She's like, but I'm proud of how it looks in the movie because I had no idea I would be able to do it. So like that, that two months of that yeah. basketball coach. Good for her. I thought yeah. the basketball was convincing enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was everybody true. looked like they knew how to play. Yep. Yeah, and the knew way how to like was, spin and move with the ball, and the way it was filmed, a lot of close up moving shots instead of like far away. Like here's the whole yep. court, very personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is just a small, small one. This is the last one, uh, unbeknownst to the director Gina Prince uh, Bythewood, that uh, leads Sine Nathan and Omar Epps had actually started dating prior to filming this movie. So. Maybe oh, a little bit more convincing for that chemistry. Natural, yeah, natural chemistry. Yeah. Okay. So, well, a lot of the other um, tidbits I found were just like, oh, this person in this movie and this other person in this movie have a connection through a third movie that they were both in later on sure. in life. Or and there was like ten of those with yeah. different combinations of people. But uh, mm -hmm. by and large, I thought those were the most interesting ones. So, uh, real before we just before I forget, last observation uh, in the call the when they're practicing in college and she's playing well but then she shoots the three and holds the hand up like to be cocky and yeah. then doesn't get back on defense last night in the timberwolves game anthony edwards shot a three <laughs> and kind of landed in a weird pose and he held it and then we did get cherry picked for, a, <laughs> for layup <laughs> at the other end and i was just like oh my god that is literally exactly what monica did you just did Ant. i love yeah. you but oh my god that's hilarious i missed the game last night so did not see that <laughs> yeah dude uh, we were up by nice. 20, so whatever. But yeah. yeah, anyways. Is it time? It is. It's time. It's time. Oh no. Let me get oh, to no. the I well, I was on the wrong page. Excuse oh, me. Oh, well, where's okay. the coat? Blam! Oh, my God, we lost <laughs> it. Oh, there it is. We well, almost lost the coat. It was in storage for a week. Something. It was in storage for a week. That's all it was. <laughs> Take the mothballs off. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's time for the McCabe Code of Excellence. Uh, kind of like our uh, green jacket for the Masters, awarded to whoever we wish, multiple people or nobody. Uh, we give it out every episode or not. So uh, I'm going to go first. I am giving the McCabe Code of Excellence to Gina Prince uh, Bythewood. Okay. Um, I just think writing and directing, this was her debut. It just, it, it, she seems so much more confident behind the camera and the dialogue and just the character work, especially with Monica, seems like that of a seasoned director and maybe you know 
Spike Lee, who knows how much influence he had kind of taking the whole thing as, as, a, as producer, but I, I, I'm going to give it to her. I thought the direction, the writing, just the whole, the whole vision and the balance and the pace was just fantastic. So Gina Prince Bythewood gets the McCabe code of excellence from me. Yeah. I'm going to split it. Uh, okay. as we have done in the past, uh, not our favorite thing to do, but I'm going to split it between the two leads. I thought Omar Epps and Sinead Lathan did a fantastic job and it was believable. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the kind of differences in their personalities when, when they go from like kids or high school into like adulthood, uh, they're obviously different actors and they're acting differently. I think it fits how you can put the pieces together of what their life was like between being 11 years old and high school. He's a little bit more of like a jock and like a cool guy. And she's kind yeah. of a little bit more timid being like, I'm a ball Awkward player, but like I boy. don't fit. Yeah, yeah. I don't fit at all where he absolutely does. And I think that very much worked. And I, so, mm -hmm. and they had a lot to chew on there. And as to your point earlier, they both get about equal amounts of screen time. Um, Omar getting a little bit less, but obviously by design, because you were telling her story, it feels like. I like that we have that balance because if you don't care about who he is and his trials and tribulations, like you're never going to care about the relationship because mm -hmm. clearly she's going through her own stuff and you were seeing that in real time. So I'm going to give it to both of them. Yeah. And I felt like the, the seeing it, seeing his character, like from kid through everything, you can kind of, it's like, Oh, he is stubborn and he does, he is kind of a jock and he, that's just like who he is. It's not lazy writing. It's actually just yep. like this son character. of a ball player, son of an Quincy NBA McCall. star. Yeah, yeah, like he's he's gonna be kind of a dick sometimes and probably think his <laughs> shit doesn't stink. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. yeah, I'm gonna play ball like my dad and be like Bronny James and just you know torch the court every time I, I touch the ball, you know. Horses mm -hmm. shit don't stink with that ass. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Nate. Well played. <laughs> <Not resist. laughs> uh, what who are you giving the code to, Nate? Or yeah, what are you doing, Nate? Um, I'm, I'm not going to give out a coat for this one. I, okay. I enjoyed it for the most part, but, um, nothing reached coat level for me. I thought the okay. movie got better as it went along, but, sure. uh, I'll mull on it a little bit more, but, uh, for me, it was kind of good, not great. So okay, no coat, but, uh, you know, totally fine with you guys giving them out. Boo yeah. from the, from the bleachers, the tiny <laughs> bleachers from the six people in the from stands. The Boo. Yeah, the bleachers. <laughs> All right. Uh, time for closing statements. Yeah. Time for closing statements. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll just start. I I'm glad I watched it. I didn't love this movie. Uh, it, like I said, it got better for me as it went along. And I think it's because we were kind of able to explore. I keep forgetting her name. Um, the name Monica's character character. Monica. Yeah. In more interesting ways as the movie progressed. I really liked what they did with her character after the five year jump. I thought that was really good. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everything once we got to Sine Lathan. Like, I didn't love the stuff when they were 11. I just kind of, as I was watching that, just felt like, okay, we've can we just power through this as quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah. So it got better for me as it went along, and I'm glad I've seen it. All right. Uh, my closing statement is uh, Love and Basketball is a great example of a crossover movie between romance and sports. Uh, the themes of each genre reinforcing the other the structure of the sports movie the language of the sports movie mixed with the kind of tropes of your typical romance um i i just thought they kind of worked very well uh together and again just all the little side narratives the stuff that's shown not told i think the movie feels in those ways kind of ahead of its time with this the the portrayal of monica and just kind of the constant ever present kind of in the background like you know the difference between their paths because of gender and like their kind of uh, their their issues their family dynamic kind of you get to see it start when they're kids and then how that affects them and how that affects their relationships because the last thing i'll say is you know i think a lot of love stories are you know it, it is kind of convenience you happen to move next to somebody you work next to somebody you go to class with somebody and also a lot of how you are in relationships is how you saw your parents act and maybe your relationship with your mom or your dad. I just think that the movie and the movie is just very, it seems very kind of down to earth and honest. Like it's not trying to this unbelievable Hollywood thing. It seems like a very kind of down to earth, like love story about two people who love basketball. So I, uh, I really liked it. Uh, I'm going to agree with that sentiment. 
Um, also kind of with the sentiment that Nate said, good, not great. And I'm also going to let you know, uh, my HDMI cord just messed up, so I can't see anything. I just <laughs> well, you had you me both. fooled. Well, we can you, see you. Yeah, I can see. I can't great. see you. I can hear you, and I know that my camera is on, but I can't see anything on my screen. Um, so okay. when we get to the end, feel free to you know do the rest of the button pushing. But, yeah, I, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm not going to try to mess with it. Uh, but I would agree. I think it felt very down to earth, especially because his dad was at one point like an NBA star, and he's like, go to school. Like, don't mm. do what I did. And like, yeah, I'm yeah. screwing up. But like in and in real time, but like, mm -hmm. so it makes it makes his relationship uh, with Monica when things get tough a little bit more understandable. That like his parents' relationship was definitely volatile. Whenever they were fighting, he would go over to Monica's house and go sleep. Yeah, like, it, that felt very that seems really good too. That like felt no very words spoken whatsoever, and they mm -hmm. like you could just tell that they've done this like dozens of times. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think the relationship itself and even their like friendship, you, uh, just felt very honest and, and original and true, mm -hmm. um, without feel like it was reaching or being too cheesy or cliche or whatever. It just kind of all worked. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I, I just watched, you know, a brand new romantic comedy that just dropped the anyone but you, mm -hmm. uh, which is on, and it was pretty good, but it felt like then watching this, I'm like, okay, this is actually like, you know this is actually like just a higher quality, just like even in the little details, yep. thematically, it's just put together sturdier and just better than a lot of the newer stuff, which kind of just feels like they're so desperate for ideas. They're just like, what can we do that hasn't been done? What can the climax yeah. of love scene be? You know? So yeah. kudos to this film for kind of coming up with an original idea and having it, you know, pulled up as kind of a timeless thing. I just think that that last scene and that last line is, Great. Great, yeah. great, great stuff. I would agree. The last thing I'll say is uh, mm -hmm. kind of cool to see a bunch of people you know who they are, but you don't maybe know their names in this movie. Oh, um, yeah. Lots and, then of a, and then a quick shout out to like, why is Tyra Banks here? But um, yeah, the Tyra Banks. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just kind of funny. That was just kind of like, oh, oh, that's right. Tyra Banks was really popular in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, so just, yeah, if you watch this movie, there's a ton of people you'll recognize you maybe don't know the name of, but definitely fun. All right. Uh, okay, so yeah, that wraps up uh, February, our love theme. That was a, it was a fun month. Glad we finally got to watch uh, In the Mood for Love, which has been on my list for ever, literally. Yep. Um, and City Lights, you know, uh, an old, the oldest movie we reviewed yet. That was a lot of fun. I've been thinking about that mo movie more since we watched it. Um, and True Romance, which I which I think is fun. Nate didn't like. That's okay. I didn't think he was going <laughs> to like it. I would have bet my money on him not liking that movie, but I'm glad we all watched it together. I tried, and I'm yeah. glad I watched it. Now, yeah, that's what, you that's what these it. are for. We're exploring <laughs> yeah. cinema. We're not just going through the ones we like. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, reminder, next movie will be Fargo. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, I believe it is your turn to put a wrap on the show. It is. Double or nothing. <laughs>